Oh, I got a new box from Bob. Let's see what it is. Well, it's certainly well packaged. We have some kind of clamp thingy here. We have some pedal looking things. And a steering wheel. It's a Camus or Camus. I don't know, how are you supposed to pronounce that? Model C5. Well, the box doesn't really tell us much, does it? Void if removed. Well, how else are we supposed to get in there? We have our user's manual. That's probably gonna be necessary. Oh, look at this. Well, this is definitely an odd looking steering wheel. What car do you think it's supposed to go on? I'm just joking, you guys. I know it's for the sim racing. But let's see what else is in the box here. We have some stickers that I guess go on the little dials here. Comes with this on screwdriver, fancy. These look like brackets, power cables, uh, a fan. That's kind of interesting. USB cables, and a big old power brick. Now let's take a look at the pedals too. Excellent, the pedals have their own manual. Kind of seems thicker than the steering wheel manual. Oh, I guess it comes partially disassembled. I think these plates were supposed to be over here, but they just kind of came loose in shipping. That's fine. Probably what was clanking around in there. Yeah, some assembly required. Well, we'll get these put together in just a minute. And this guy here looks like a desk clamp. Another screwdriver, some bits and bobbles. Yeah, gotta get all this figured out. So I gotta admit, I'm probably not very qualified to give a really good review on this guy. You see, the last time I played a sim racing game was Gran Turismo 4, which was, God, like 20 years ago? And I was on the PlayStation 2, and I did have a really nice Logitech wheel for it. I think it was probably the best wheel you could get at the time, at least for that platform. And from what I hear, Logitech hasn't even really upgraded their wheels all that much. Which, I don't know, it's probably a good testament to how they built their wheels to begin with, but... I don't know, times have definitely moved on in the sim racing world. Now, I do know the thing that makes this wheel stand out from all others is that it's a direct drive wheel but it's extremely compact. The motor is actually built into the wheel itself. Most direct drive systems, the wheel just attaches to the motor and the motor is like this big long thing. And you pretty much have to have a SIM chassis to put your wheel on if you have one of those setups. But this thing can mount nice and compact onto a desk. Heck, this thing's even smaller than my old Logitech wheel. But it certainly feels a whole lot more substantial. This thing's got some gravity to it. But talking about the wheel itself, it's wrapped in like this nice leather type material. I don't know if it's actually leather, but it, it feels nice in the hand. It obviously has a little LED display up here and it's not quite a D-pad, but there's directional buttons here and you got your four buttons over here. And it has like what, two, four, eight, 12 other buttons that I'm guessing are programmable. And these three little rotary switches, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve position. Did I count that right? I don't know. You tell me in the comments below, but uh, that's that's pretty neat. I'm guessing you have to program these or they might be game specific, you know. I don't know. Looking on the back side of the wheel, you can see the paddle shifter is a little bit better. These paddle shifters are itty bitty. That's I don't know if I like that, but we're holding on to the wheel and actuating the paddles. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if we can put like little extensions on those or something. Might make them a little, a little nicer to work with there. I don't know. And looking down in there, you can kind of see the coils of the motor a little bit. And this part right here attaches to your bracket, which attaches to the desk. And this stays stationary, even though I'm rotating it right now. But it stays stationary and rotates the wheel around it. And of course, you got your main power button. You got a reset button. This is a little fan port. USB to the computer, your DC input, and this is where you plug in your pedals or your external handbrake or shifter. These are USB-C. So let's check out the user's manual. Do not place the device in humid or rainy environments to avoid short circuiting, damage, fire, electrical shock, and other risks. All right, I guess I won't be playing games in the rain. We have your size and our weight there. You can convert that into freedom units if you'd like. And it tells you here, this is a five Newton meter motor. 
And that's basically just telling you how strong the force feedback of the motor can be. And with direct drive systems, five newton meters is kind of the lower end of things. There's also eight newton meters and 12 and 15. I think it even goes up to 20, I don't even know. And the main body is made out of 6061 aluminum. Oh, and I should probably say why you would even want a direct drive system to begin with. The older style wheels, like my old Logitech, they have a belt driven system where the motor is hooked up to a belt. And that's fine, except for the fact that the belt has a little bit of play and slack in it, and it just can't apply a whole lot of torque to it. But the direct drive motors will actually apply torque directly to the wheel. And apparently they can also simulate even imperfections in the road and stuff like that, which I don't know, that seems mind boggling to me, but I'm really eager to try that out. Here we have some descriptions of what the buttons do. Obviously up, down, left, right, and then A is your reverse, B is change viewpoint, C is handbrake, and D is <laughs> flashing your lights or selecting your high beam, low beams. All right, here's instructions on putting together the desk mount. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it says the first thing you have to do is actually put these brackets on the desk, but I, you, you gotta put these part of the brackets together first. All right, so the first thing you gotta do is actually screw this guy up through the bracket, and then you can put the cup on top of the screw like that, and then look at that. It goes down through that hole, and then you can screw it on in. Do the same thing to the other one, and this goes through the same way. And now this is the bottom plate to the bracket, and as you can see, you have several options here uh, where you want to mount it. That's why you should probably put this on the desk first, but I'm just going to wing it and see how it goes. See, I think that would put it too far back. That would put it, you know, kind of right in the middle, and then this one's going to put it the furthest forward, or closest to me, I guess I should say. So I'm going to use these holes right here. Looks like these other screws are hex heads. The hex wrench is actually in this kit right here, which was in with the steering wheel, not with the bracket. And these guys just go in easy peasy. Probably want to get these tightened down real nice and tight. This isn't something you'd want flopping around in your desk or jiggling. Make sure on the other side, you're definitely using the same holes. And you know, so far everything's lining up nice. It's uh, nice to see everything machined well, I suppose. Set this piece to the side for a minute and we'll focus our attention on this plate right here. We need to mount the blower in here and it looks like the blower, oh, well, it's probably gonna suck from this side, right? And it's supposed to blow towards the front. So it goes onto these little pegs right here. You see these pegs and those pegs are threaded. So it goes on like that. And we're gonna want these tiny screws out of the steering wheel kit. They drop down in there like that and just screw them in with the screwdriver. So now we're gonna attach the top plate to our bottom bracket here. Slides in like so. And we're gonna put the back screws in first. Flip it over and put this screw in. Now with the back screws in, you can raise and lower this guy right here. And you select what angle you want your wheel to sit at by putting the, uh, the front screws in you know, those holes there. Might need to adjust it once I get it on the desk, but I'm probably going to want it in the lower hole. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the screw in there. Flip it over and do the same thing on this side. And then I'll just make sure each one of these is nice and tight. Now taking a look at the bottom side of this thing, you can kind of see how the screws from mounting the bottom part of the, the bracket to where it mounts on the desk, it kind of protrudes here a little bit. And you know, that's probably going to mark up your desk, but they have these little foam thingies there. We get the foam thingies in here like this, and that'll help protect your desk from, you know, when you clamp this guy in. It's a little tricky because, you know, you're going around a bend on this thing, but this thing is flexible, so you can kind of position it where you need it. Maybe try to get this one a little bit better. There we go. That looks pretty good. And this finish looks pretty darn nice, but you can kind of see some of it's came off when we were putting it together. I don't really think that's going to be a big deal. But I'm going to set this aside for the moment and then turn our focus on the wheel and we're going to mount these brackets on the back. Looks like they go with the riding facing out and facing, you know, right side up, of course, which means the long side goes to the bottom. And we see these uh, screws have a taper on them that fits down into this taper here. And they just screw in easy peasy. Repeat the same thing on the other side. And you can see the lettering is the correct way up on this side. So you know which way it's supposed to go. All right, now we get these nice and all snugged up. Now this part is gonna slide into this thing like this. You see here it's got these little channels 
these arms right here slide into these channels. Get these holes lined up. Everything's going together pretty nice and easy. You can always tell when something's nicely made when all the parts and pieces assemble together without much fuss. You know, badly made stuff just doesn't fit right whenever you put it together. I've seen things for very expensive cars that were very expensive themselves that were really difficult to put together because they just weren't machined quite right. But, you know, this is nice and nice and tight. After snugging all these guys up, we're gonna take our little fan controller and plug it in. Now you can see how this is gonna be stationary in the desk and the wheel is gonna turn like that. Oh, and these little round pads need to go on these guys right here. Helps protect your desk, but probably also keeps this thing from slipping around very much. The little rubber things are grippy, you know? Well, let's set this thing to the side now and take a look at the pedals. Yeah, let's get all the pieces taken out of the box here. Oh, this one's got little bitty screws. Got some square rubbers. Let's see the pedals. Very well packed in foam. Make sure there's not anything else in here. Uh, I think it's it. This guy out of the foam. Oh, it's got the connectors on the back of this guy. Obviously your pedal sensors are down in there. So we have our basic information. Have your size and your weight. These are kind of a lightweight set of pedals, I think. They just have standards like spring tension. And it uses a Hall Effect type sensor. I don't know if that's relevant to some of you guys, but oh, now that's interesting. It's got a CAN interface on it too. I, that's kind of strange. I don't know why a SIM setup would have CAN bus, but all right. When the CP5 pedal is used for the first time, it needs to be connected to the PC software to reset the initial value. After the assembly is completed, connect to the device, then start the CAMUS application, enter the device and set the pedal extreme value by pressing the pedal all the way to their furthest position. Oh, this thing is the arm that actually activates the little, this is probably a magnet. Yeah, this is a magnet. And this magnet is what gets detected by the little sensor in here. Okay, I'm getting you now. Now to put this thing together, you kind of have to tilt the pedal a little bit and slide it into that slot there. And then the screws screw in from the bottom into that thing. There we go, we can see the holes lining up there. Kind of have itty bitty screws for this thing. The screws fit in there nicely. Of course, we want to get that nice and tight. Oh, and I should point out that the pedals are actually labeled brake pedal and then accelerator pedal. So you know which side they go on. At least I hope you know which side they go on. And again, it kind of tilts and rotates in there like that. Getting the holes lined up is a little fiddly, but once you get the screws started, it goes nice and easy. All right, let's get the pedals put on. All right, you can see we have some adjustability with the pedals here. I'm probably just gonna put them at the top. I think the top is probably the best place to put them. See, that's as low as they can go. And then that's as high as they can go. You know, get the top one started first. Now I'll make the lining up the bottom one easy. Now I'll do the same thing on this side over here. And I guess it's worth pointing out that the system only has two pedals. So I guess you're not gonna be doing any clutch work and shifting but i think i saw on there that it allows for an external shifter to be added so you know i don't know all right we got those on there nice and tight and you know if we had a rig that we were bolting this thing into you could bolt it with these things right here but since i'm just going to be putting it on the floor i'm going to take these non-slip pads here and just put them here and here and I don't think it's going to go anywhere anyway, because this part's going to butt right up against the wall. Or at least I think it is. That's not going to interfere with the pedals, is it? Nah, probably not. Now checking the travel of these pedals. Uh, they, they both have the same amount of travel. It's going to be interesting seeing whenever I actually get to play in the game, how these feel. Like, will I actually be able to modulate the brake and the accelerator? I, I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Well, let's get all this hooked up to the computer and see how she do. All right, as you can see, it's clamped to the desk now. Let's uh, reach back here, hit the power button. Go through a little test doohickey. They have the Camus software pulled up here that was just downloaded off their website, easy peasy. When I first loaded it, it thought the center was like way over here somewhere. So I actually went over to devices and in here you can set your steering angle, your min and max, but more importantly, you can set the wheel position. So to set that, you just click center and then you put the center or, you know, the little line right here straight up, click okay. And then that sets the centering of the wheel just right. And in the parameter section, you can change 
you know how strong you want your force feedback settings all that good stuff you also set your game effects and assistance whatever this is i'm not really sure maybe you guys in the comments can let me know below tell me what your favorite settings are but that's really kind of all i did to set up the wheel it was mostly just plug and play now inside a set of corso there was one thing that was kind of interesting go over to controls you have to set it up as a custom wheel and for some reason whenever i first set this thing up the brakes were like inverted so i had to hold down the brake to not brake and let off the brake to brake it, it was kind of hilarious to drive that way so i just had to check mark the invert that that axis right there so i should probably tell you guys a little bit about my gaming rig here as you can see i've got three monitors and i bought these monitors for five dollars a piece from a government auction so you know they're high quality and i actually have this really neat monitor stand which i wish i had bought a monitor stand like this a long time ago because it really freed up a lot of room on my desk and i don't know if you guys can see this right here but this is kind of my favorite feature of the monitor stand all the little tools to adjust the arms and whatnot it's got a little caddy right there for it so that's that's a great attention to detail i love that sort of thing i'll leave a link for this monitor stand in the description below it's i really like it but anyway my computer is like seven years old but i have upgraded the cpu it's got a 5900x in it and i also put a geforce 3060 in here so you know I, it was really important to bump up that sort of thing for just the video editing i do like I said, I'm not a gamer, so I haven't really been playing any games on it, but it should be able to handle a set of Corsa perfectly fine. Now there is one thing that's kind of weird. Maybe you guys can tell me why this is, but for some reason, a set of Corsa does not work full screen with my monitors. I have to drag the corners out like this and run it in like a windowed setup like this. And it just kind of looks a little odd like this. You know, I don't know. Maybe some of you experts can let me know in the comments below why it's doing this it might have something to do with my five dollar monitors I, I don't really know but yeah let's jump in here and see how the wheel is yeah i don't know if you guys can see this but like whenever you go over the rumble strips it you really feel it it feels just like rumble strips it's kind of nice And you know, it's it's kind of interesting. I actually get a kind of a feeling of when the tires are slipping. It's works really well, actually. Yeah, you can feel the curbing. <laughs> and you know, whenever the car is tracking nice and smooth, like the wheel feels smooth. Otherwise, it has lots of vibrations coming through. You know, earlier I was talking about the 5 newton meters of force and how that's on the lower end of things. I mean, this wheel, it, it really does, like, pull you around. I can't imagine, like, one of those big, like, 15 newton meter things feel like. It must be crazy. And as you can see right there, even though I'm sliding all over the place and don't know how to play the game and obviously can't drive, I can actually feel when the car is sliding around and can kind of catch it. It works pretty darn good. I'm surprised at how well the wheel actually feels. A lot of information is coming in through here. And I actually want to show you guys something kind of interesting. I'm just going to turn the sound off. But do you hear all that? <laughs> the sound to the game is completely off. But the wheel itself just has so much vibration coming through that it makes all these little noises. <laughs> See, it's nice and neutral there, so there's not much. But... You can hear a little bit of the slip that's coming through the wheel. Pretty wild stuff. See, listen to all that. <laughs> it's crazy how the vibrations 
coming from the wheel make all that noise? Oh, turn too soon. Ah, yeah, well, I suck at the game, but I don't know. I'm really impressed with this wheel. I think eventually I'll be able to actually learn how to play this thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like this wheel like really throws you around. When you're hitting those curbs and whatnot, like you really feel it. Do, do, do. And also when the car is just kind of getting a little unstable, you know, it you you feel it. So yeah, I mean, if if you need a desktop wheel, especially since this thing's so compact. I would highly recommend this thing. And if you're looking for one, definitely get it from the link in the description below from DI Corsa. Oh, and I also want to point out that if you're a Fiat fan, uh, the Fiatville is actually doing a sim racing challenge. So head on over to the Fiatville Facebook page, or if you're not on Facebook, join us at FiatvilleUSA.com. Wow, shouldn't talk and drive, but I'll drop a link for that in the description below. So come join us for our sim challenge. wasn't too bad <laughs> maybe I'm getting the hang of this but yeah I highly recommend this wheel it's a lot of fun and yeah makes sim games quite enjoyable <laughs> so subscribe if you're not already and give us a thumbs up too it really helps the channel out bye thanks for watching Ha, 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 ha.